It sure is crazy that the world ended on June 17th, 1987, and that we all exist within hell. And welcome back to Devlog. In the last part I talked about the Flying Factory level, and this part I will talk about the visual design of the Flying Factory level. The main design of is to use more of a tile map system or a tile set system in opposed to sprite shapes because I was curious as to how a level design with those sort of shapes would work. Additionally, the actual design of the Flying Factory is more room based, so the tile set is a lot more forgiving in terms of actual design because you're already going to exist in blocky rooms, it doesn't really matter if they are more blocky. The actual inspiration for a lot of the designs for the Flying Factory are the Mario Maker puzzle rooms where the level exists within one room. I wanted the same to be for Pepel except for different rooms you would descend through when completing the level. So each of the areas in the Flying Factory are made to be rooms that you sort of descend into, solve the puzzle for, and then descend into the next room. Because of this, the entire room has to exist within one visual in the level. So for this, I just modify the player camera so it does not move on the x-axis when in the flying factory. So it is only vertically going up or down. I felt like the design for the actual tile set was a bit basic in terms of curved surfaces because this is Papel Baby, we want the curved surfaces because that's what the game is all about. So I then decided a grid map that would serve as any curved surfaces that I would need for the flying factory. Another tile set I made for the Flying Factory is a more plasticky version of the pipe sprite that I used for the trash trail level because the pipes were originally going to be what the moving objects were going to be made out of so I made a plastic version of this and I made a grid background for these that would overlay on top of the animated gears behind the moving objects. These are all basically reused sprites that I just altered in some way to be different looking but realistically not a whole lot has changed between these and the original versions of the visuals of these sprites. Another sprite I wanted to design for the Flying Factory is just a variety of objects that would give the illusion of making the Flying Factory fly, these being propellers, boosting objects, a third option, and a little gear screw thing that can go on some of the visuals. These are to give the actual tile set some more unique elements to it by adding these in random places throughout the level design. They actually have a functionality, the propellers and fire from the boosters will damage the player, but there are very few sections of the Flying Factory where these are used for hazards, in opposed to just a visual distinction in that section of the Flying Factory. Originally, my design for the hazards in the Flying Factory were just going to be a section of the tile map that was torn up and had spikes in them, as in the fact that Flying Factory is in a level of disrepair. This was a bad idea because it was too visually dissimilar from the actual tile set to be able to very clearly tell that it is a hazard at a glance. Obviously, the evil spiked surfaces would be a hazard, but generally, I prefer to distinguish hazards in the levels in a way where they will be a different colour in some way from the rest of the scenery in a level or have some level of very obvious standout feature that makes it look like a hazard. The torn up, broken apart tile set made the hazards look too similar to the actual geometry of the level and was too difficult to be able to consistently tell what is and is not a hazard. So I remade these as just a different sprite shape of spikes. I quite like how the spikes look, they very obviously stand out because they're a different colour. They are spiky, I like how they look. Spikes also are a lot more obviously a hazard in opposed to the cut apart version of the tile set which could be read differently in a way that is not a hazard. The only problem with the tile set of the spikes is that they do not actually fit together with the tile set of the Flying Factory, but this is very very easy, the tile set of the Flying Factory is very basic enough so the spikes could just be placed on the edge of a Flying Factory section of the tile set and they would blend in just fine because the base of the spikes are the same colour as the Flying Factory spikes so they could give the impression of maybe having a clip-on feature to the Flying Factory tile set so they don't look out of place when I place a bunch of spikes flying in the air for some sections. Next we have the other random items, these being the cogs and 
runner balls and the conveyor belt things and the chain for the actual object in the flying factory. These are all very, very simple to draw. The chain is a recolor of a chain sprite I used in the trash trail that I just made to be the color palette of the flying factory. The runner ball is a funny star. The reason it is a funny star is because I wanted to have a nice visual distinction of when it is rolling around and if it is a star it has five points it will obviously look very clear when it is running around in a circle that it is rotating. The objects that the runner balls pull being the pulley systems are just two sprites one on top of the other that I just repeat over and over for whatever length this object needs to be and the cogs are gigantic cogs. These were easy to draw. I just drew cogs. I drew around them to give the impression of lighting on the cogs. I added random details where the cog would look more detailed. I think drawing big metal objects is pretty simple. I just draw lighting in a certain way that makes it look metal, and then I draw scratches on the metal object to make it look damaged and in the level of disrepair. Pretty, pretty simple visual that I can add to the level. And also, these are very large sprites. So, I'm a big fan of how they actually turned out visually. I like how the cogs look. These were, again, a visual idea I wanted to implement in the beginning of Pat Pals development, and then reused in the trash trail, and then I could not use the sprites that I had made months and months ago for this section of the level because I wanted something more unique and something highly more specific, so I just remade the visual for the cogs. Next I have the background design for the Flying Factory. The background design for the Flying Factory was very, very simple. In other levels I have a scrolling background. This is not possible in the Flying Factory because it is vertical and there is nothing to scroll. This made the background significantly more easier to draw for. I drew a gradient pattern for the background. The background is nighttime. I drew a variety of cloud sprites. I arranged these on the background descending as you go down. I changed the Z position of, the, of these so they have different different distancing from the camera. I made the colors of each cloud match the color scheme of the gradient that they appear in front of. On the background, I drew a bunch of random planets because it is nighttime and I wanted to draw funny planets. I arranged these at a further distance away from the camera so that there is planets in space to give foreshadowing to the horrifying meteor that destroys the game at the last level that Pep Pal causes the apocalypse with because space is the last level of Pep Pellington. Pep Pal goes to space. Finally, we have the new character skin that the player unlocks upon beating this level. Mwah, I love every single character skin in Pep Pal. They all look really, really fun. I'm really happy with the actual character skins that I have made for Pep Pal. This is another repeating slug glove phrase. I really like the character skins in Pep Pal. I'm a big fan of the fact that I implemented these. It was a really good design choice for me. Honestly, I have never really much cared for costume changes in video games, but upon making them, I quite like them. I really like the design for the costume for the Flying Factory. Originally, they were going to be more of a yellow robot, but they looked too similar to the body of the Aquatic Abode skin, which is also the skin you unlock preceding this current skin, so I didn't want two robotic-y, yellow-looking skins in a row, so I changed the skin to be more of a yellow robot with green eyes. The green eyes are inspired by Gur from Invader Zim. I was originally going to make this robot so it didn't have eyes, but I have made too many character skins where they don't have eyes, so I wanted the robot to have eyes. I then drew the robot, I removed one of the arms, I removed one of the legs, legs because I wanted it to be in a level of disrepair, and I also think this is more of a unique design choice because the robot now has a high level of asymmetry, which I quite like in the design. The actual design for the robotic bodily parts are very very simple. I drew the base colors, I drew the robotic shining of these, I just made them look shiny and robotic and metal, and that's pretty much it. It, as it's core, cool, is a pretty basic looking robot design. I drew hair on the robot because I realized that a lot of my character skins do not have Pet Pal long hair, and I'm a pretty big fan of the fact that Pet Pal by design has long hair. I think having long hair in a character design is at least in video games, a little bit uncommon because long hair is an absolute pain to animate and 
plan for in a character design, and I don't really fault anyone for not doing it. But I really like Peppa's long hair, so I wanted to give the character some level of long hair, so the robot just has blonde hair for no real logical reasoning. And then the hat becomes a little light bulb. This was originally going to be on a strand coming from the character's head, but it is not how the actual hat of Pep Pell is animated or placed on Pep Pell, so it just becomes a little glowing bulb that hovers over the character's head. Overall, I really like the robot. I think of all the different character skins as actual different characters in Pep Pell, even though that's not canonically what they are. I like the robot design a lot. I like little robots, so this one really appealed to me. Overall, very simple design to draw, very simple design to color, very simple design to actually implement into the game. Big fan of how it looks. It's a cool little robo. And that is it for devlog with the completion of this level. That means there is only two more full levels to make for Pet Pel and the base game is complete. That aside, there is seven base levels and 16 levels in total, so I still have nine more levels to go after making the final level, but those are a lot easier to make for. So, two more to go, baby, then Peppel's done. Wahoo, yippee!